Hello everybody, welcome. Today we're taking a look at boundaries. We're gonna talk about the three ways that you know this boundary is a tornado machine or if it's just gonna be, well, it's gonna be a day you don't wanna storm chase, okay? The three things we're looking for are simple. Is this boundary stalled? What's the cap situation? What's the relationship of the boundary orientation with the upper level winds? How strong are those upper level winds? Where is this storm going to be able to latch onto this boundary and do cool things? We're going to talk about all of that right after this. Today's presentation, I'm really excited. We're trying a new class format. This is going to be very interesting. So the first thing, let's get started on this and let's talk about it a little bit. What boundaries are interesting? Which ones are not? You got three things you want to look for. Is this boundary moving or stalled? Is there a cap today or not? And of course, what is the difference of the upper winds and the boundary? Are those winds too strong? We're going to talk about all of this in the next few minutes. Let's go. Okay, so let's get started with this. Let's take a look at this map. It's right over here on my secondary screen. And the first day we're looking at is May 23rd, 2014. I want to say May 24th, 2013. May 23rd, 2014. And here we go. If you take a look, you can actually see, follow my mouse cursor, you can actually see like a boundary, right? Well, let's just go down a little bit and you can see I've mapped out two different boundaries on this surface chart. One is running here from about Lawton, Wichita Falls. It goes down to just west of Abilene. It goes down here to Big Spring, uh, east at, or then west back toward the Texas-New Mexico border. There's also, it looks like a secondary boundary of sorts uh, running here to the South Sea. The winds are calm at those two observation sites. So and you see here, the winds are just northerly blasting. There's actually thunderstorms happening right here. This is early afternoon, by the way. I should preface that. So this is an early afternoon surface chart. So we, if we move on down, uh, let's take a look at the satellite just to confirm that we have boundaries ongoing. And we do. Look at this. Uh, you can see, follow, again, follow my mouse cursor. There's a fine line of clouds. And there's also one down here. There's storms ongoing right here. And there's storms ongoing up here. And... Well, let's just map that out. So you got that again. Also, worth noting, there's storms going on everywhere, right? So uh, take a look. Yeah, you got storms going on all up and down the central mountain chain here in uh, eastern New Mexico, along central New Mexico. A lot of days you get these types of setups where storms forming uh, here uh, off the central mountains. You can see there's plenty of moisture. Uh, you can see that with the cumulus clouds right there. Uh, running just basically uh, uh, east of this uh, area of storms. That means there's plenty of moisture in the atmosphere. A couple other things I want to point your attention to on, on these is simply look at this. There's a boundary here. There's storms actually going up. I believe those are the Davis Mountains there just uh, in western Texas. There's some going up here uh, toward the Guadalupe Mountains uh, and also back here on the Sacramento Mountains. And then you see here, there's a lot of storms ongoing, a lot of storms ongoing on the east side of this. That's a clue, okay? So let's go again. You can see these boundaries, both of these boundaries are actually shifting south at this point. So we're going back to what we talked about a second ago. Are these boundaries moving? Yes, they are. Uh, uh, is there like, what are the upper winds doing? Is there a cap? Well, there's not much of a cap. Let's talk about the cap first. There's not much of a cap. Take a look at this. There are storms everywhere. That is not a capped atmosphere. So there's not much of a cap on this day. Another thing, let's talk about those upper level winds. Let's bring those into the picture. Uh, you can kind of, uh, if you're wondering like on satellite, how do I do this? Well, you can take a look at the upper level winds here and you can see uh, you can take a look at the anvils, which where are they blowing off? That kind of gives you a good picture of the upper level winds. Also, that also gives you a little bit of an idea about where storms are going to move, all things being equal, unless they latch onto a boundary and move right. So the other question we have to answer, are these winds too strong? Well, on this day, 
the upper winds were blowing 40, 45 knots. I think that is too strong for a boundary day for a lot of these. If the if there's a lot of crossover, you can see here, uh, there's a lot of crossover. The orientation of the boundaries, there's a lot of crossover. And then worse, uh, you can see here, starting about here and going northeast, that's parallel. Anytime you see uh, your shear vectors parallel with boundaries, expect messy linear storm mode. So no good up here. Uh, and down here, you can see these storms are all crossing over uh, uh, through this boundary. Now, there is a target on this day that I found interesting, and it was southeast New Mexico. Because if you follow this boundary, I didn't map it out, but if you follow, follow the cursor all the way back, there is a, you can see that where that boundary kind of intersects out here, that's what I was looking for. We were looking for supercells coming off the mountains that might interact with like the western fringes of this boundary. What we saw, well, it was pretty interesting. It's uh, gearing up to possibly be tornadic. This one to the north uh, had a very elevated uh, funnel cloud, perhaps possible land spout. Yeah, I agree. You want to back off a bit? Yeah, here in a second. I was going to, I was watching that. See, see in the grain course, see that ro rising and rotating? Oh, yeah, I see. Still here. Oh, yeah, you hear it good. Sounds like a train over there. Okay, so the next day I want to take a look at is the very next day from what we just looked at. Those supercells were really cool, okay, but we wanted a tornado, like New Mexican tornado. That's what we were after. So the next day we were thinking, hey, we're gonna have another shot right here, probably just in the same area that hotels in Carlsbad that night were ridiculous. So we stayed in Hobbs and we woke up in Hobbs, New Mexico, and this is what it looks like. Oh, not good. Because you can see a couple of things I wanna point out very quickly uh, as we woke up this morning. First off, there are storms out here. What's going on? There are storms, that's not, good uh, for a boundary to stay stalled. Remember, we want boundaries to be stalled for ideal boundary days. And in fact, uh, let's skip ahead three hours and you can see. We're at midday now and this is what's happening. There are storms everywhere up here. This boundary is on the move still south. It's kind of stalling. It was kind of stalling back here, but there are some storms just to the north of that boundary. That's not good. That's that's still like, you don't want storms north of boundaries. Those are not your target because they're not getting uh, this rich air here. So what we did notice, uh, you know, here's the upper jet. So again, if there's a little bit better crossover here, because you can see it's kind of crossing over. It's not really running parallel all through this region, but this boundary had gone 100 200 miles further south than we had expected that morning. So we actually did not chase this day. But if you take a look, there's storm, there's areas of storms possibly everywhere here. But you can see compared to the day before, you know, there's not as many storms. Like th th this is a sign that the upper air winds are a little uh, weaker. It's also a sign that the capping is probably a little stronger. And you can see really the best, uh, most robust convection here happening mid afternoon about three o'clock is happening along and just north of this boundary. So what ended up happening this day is that the storm right here turned hard right and it kind of rode this boundary and it ended up producing a couple of tornadoes. This is what happened this day. Really cool uh, chase day if you were there, but you know, they were very weak, very brief. This was not a cyclic tornado machine because this boundary still was having a tendency to slowly sag south. It's a little stalled, but not really. So. This was not an ideal day for a boundary storm chase to get everything you're looking for. This is the next day. And this is our final day we're looking at for this video. I wanna run through this one because this is where we put it all together. Okay, first thing we're looking for, is this boundary stalled? Yes, this boundary, uh, first off, it's not as well defined. Uh, you can tell, you can see, uh, if you run through here, there are a couple boundaries, okay? I'm turning it on and off. You can see it. Uh, first off, uh, running down through here, this is the dry line. See how it's clear back up here and there's sudden burst of cumulus? Folks, that's the Southern Plains dry line. That's 
magic, right? And then you see another boundary. It's uh, sagging south and east through here. Uh, that is actually, uh, it's not as well defined. It's not that really well defined thin line of cumulus. I actually feel like there's almost like a, a inverse relationship. If you can clearly see a line of cumulus by afternoon, I feel like those boundaries are, they're not ready for prime time. But if you see something like this, you know, some slight uh, gravity wave action up here to the north of it showing uh, cap air mass to the north, but you see this robust uh, cumulus south of it. And there's an intersection with like a main boundary, such as a dry line. The dry line outflow boundary intersection is an all time classic. This is where really cool, amazing stuff happens. This storm went up rocketed up right here and i was like okay we're gonna find out because the first warning comes out severe warning it's moving northeast because you can see uh you can see with the anvil that's about uh direction it was moving northeast at 35 the next warning was a tornado warning it was moving east at 10 the storm hit that boundary latched on let's talk about a couple of things that you could look for uh, to see what happens because this storm produced tornado after tornado after tornado for hours. One of my favorite storms, this is a top five storm chase for me, and it is, as you can see, well over a decade old. This is the type of chase they, that sticks with you forever. So you have these boundaries. You have a dry line running north-south through here. You have this outflow boundary intersecting it in north-central, northwest Oklahoma. And there's a little bit of a double dry line feature here. Uh, but you know, we're, we're not looking for that. We're looking for boundaries today. That's what we're looking for. Pretty simple. This storm right here is going up north of this boundary. It's going up in the cold air. So you disregard anything. If it's north of these boundaries by a good bit, you, you don't want to chase those storms. Those are not the ones that are going to be the cyclic tornado machines. It's going to be the ones that latch onto these boundaries, these vorticity rich zones with backed winds. Those are going to be the ones. So, uh, the second question do we have a cap today? Well, pretty obvious, right? Uh, there are no storms going up down here whatsoever. There is a storm going up on the boundary intersection, and there's one that's gone up north of the boundary. So right now, we have isolated storm modes. That's important, because if you're going to get a cyclic tornado machine that produces photogenic tornadoes, you need the storm to be isolated as much as possible. What's the upper winds doing? Well, the upper winds are coming in uh, here to the west. You can see just, again, you can see the same type of thing. Uh, this, these are crossing over. There is no, this is like almost perpendicular uh, kind of orientation here. So you're not going to get that training effect that you get. Like uh, for these boundaries, personally, I think east, west, or slightly south of east, like this one, are the ideal orientations on the Great Plains for tornadoes, for these tornado machines. So warm fronts, uh, outflow boundaries, etc. You want to see this. Uh, so, and you can see, this is where it's at. Right there, that boundary intersection. Like I said, this storm was incredible. And it did this because of that boundary intersection. And so another thing you can keep, you can look at, you know, you can see these low-level cloud streaks right here indicating the direction of the low-level winds. So you can tell just from those two things. We're just looking at satellite here, folks. We're, I mean, there's a lesson in of itself. You can see there's good wind shear. We got a boundary intersection. The cap's not too terribly strong, but it is strong enough to prevent more robust storms further to the south. This is a day for an isolated storm that goes absolutely bonkers on a uh, boundary because what happened on this day is the upper level winds were 30 ish knots. They weren't too strong. So, what happened is that those upper level winds did not carry this storm over and across this boundary. They didn't do that. What they did is that they uh, got the storm to form, got it to spin, and immediately this storm saw it, like, got that boundary latched onto it and turned hard right. So, suddenly, uh, it, this is a massive increase in the shear because you've got a storm going against the upper level winds, going against the low level winds. The photographs, storm related photographs on these storms had to have been amazing. I need to, we need to get Cameron Nixon on the line to pull this one because this was a really big time day. This storm drifted east, southeast, and like I said, produced tornado after tornado. Amazing storm. There's tornadoes with no advance warning. <laughs> Basement 
Here's the three things you need to look for with boundaries. These, these were three case studies, one that didn't produce tornadoes, one that did but brief and weak, not the best, and then one that just went absolutely bananas. You want to have a stalled boundary. You need to have these boundaries stalled. If they are moving at all, that's going to have a tendency to undercut storms, and that's not going to be good. It's also going to have a tendency, if you don't have a strong cap, to produce a lot of storms. You need that stalled boundary for tornado machines. You will also need a moderate cap. Weak caps when boundaries means lots of storms almost always. You don't want no cap. Don't want no cap. That's terrible grammar, folks. But you don't want any cap uh, because you don't want to have... Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. There's a blooper reel right there. So with the cap, you don't want to have... Uh, a capping situation where there's absolutely none because if you don't have any cap whatsoever storms are going to go up everywhere you need a moderate cap or a weak cap you need a cap of some sort to keep the weak updrafts at base so you can keep an isolated storm that can take advantage of the atmosphere and uh the wind shear that day another thing that i really didn't talk too much about but i think is very important is you need a really rich moisture environment. You need to have a situation where uh, the temperature dew point spread is 10 or less. If you have that, that's something too. That, that's a bonus here that's not even listed. So if you watch the video, there you go. 10 or less temperature dew point spread. Typically that means uh, dew points in the spring, uh, you know, somewhere between 63 to 72, something like that. And then also you need the boundary to be oriented right of the upper winds. You can't have it left of the upper winds. You can't have it parallel to the upper winds. It has to be oriented right of the upper winds. Typically on the plains, this means east, west to south of east uh, orientation. My favorite are those east to east, southeast, like just slightly south of east. Those are the ones that get it done for sure. And you also need to have uh, the upper winds not too strong, 30, 40 knots at the most. Uh, depending on like how deviant that boundary is, it's a balancing act. Uh, you don't want to have a storm be pushed up and north of the boundary. You can get a brief interaction if you do that, and you could produce a brief tornado, and it would be like a one and done. But if you want those cyclic uh, tornado machines, you don't want the upper winds to be too strong, but you need them Good enough to produce a supercell. You need a supercell like to, you need the storm to be a supercell going up, but then you need it to like slow down and drift east and southeast. If you do that, these boundaries go absolutely bananas and you will see a lot of tornadoes on those days. So let's talk about those three things one last time. You're looking for a stalled boundary. You're looking for a moderate cap. No cap means lots of storms. Too much cap means no storms. You're wanting a moderate cap so you can get isolated storms and not a bunch of storms at once. And the last thing, which I think is very important, this might be the key of the whole thing beyond those two, is that you want a boundary that's oriented to the right of the upper level winds. You want a storm to be able to turn right and latch onto that. So you don't want those upper level winds too strong because if they're too strong, well, bad things happen. Storm crosses north over it, nothing is going to happen. So you want to be able to have a storm be able to turn right and latch onto it. That means the upper level winds are not too strong. And then a bonus one that we did not talk about yet, but you want temperature dew point spreads to be 10 or less for these. And ideally you want those dew points 63, 72. You want a very moist atmosphere, lots of instability. The more instability on these days, the better you're going to be. I love ML capes of 2,500 or more for a great boundary day. So, hey, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so, it is time to hit the subscribe button because we do this and a lot more on this channel. And remember, weather complicated, weather interesting, weather endlessly fascinating. And the weather is for you. We'll see you next time.